Hi, this is Sherry Gallagher again, and we are just about to finish up with the context of the organization and the changes from ISO 9001-2008 to ISO 9001-2015. We're going to be dealing with the external issues, and this should be a lot quicker video than the other ones. But when we're through with this one, if you've done in, uh, interested parties and internal issues, uh, you should be ready to move on to the next step, and you're through context of the organization. All right, we're going to start out with a quick review. We need to first understand the scope of our company. What is it that our company makes? Do we make cotton candy or steel stampings? Hopefully you don't do both. If you are doing steel stampings and say you work for the automotive industry, do you do your own design and development, or is that provided for you? What products and services do, does your company provide? Now we're going to look at the external influences that impact your company. So what is it that the rest of the world does to you versus what you do to the rest of the world? All right, so let's let get to the, the heart of it. External influences are different from internal influences. Internal influences are controllable or somewhat controllable by the company. External influences are not. So what has to be determined is how they will be monitored and what is the reaction plan to minimize risk and maximize opportunity. With internal influences, you could actually minimize risk, you could change risk, you could change your opportunity. With external influences, your only option is how are you going to react. So once again, we're going to use a simple model. Now this is only one model. You can, there's a many, many of them out there. You can use whatever works best for your company. Just to keep things simple, we're going to use one model. We're going to use the PESTEL model. But any model used for strategic analysis or market research may be effective in determining the external issues that your company faces. Now, what is the PESTEL model? First time somebody said that to me, I said, we'll get some bug spray. Um, the PESTEL model takes into account political influences, economic influences, social influences, technological influences, environmental influences, and legal influences. You can flip some of those around in a different order and you can make up a different word, but we're just going to go with PESTEL this time. So let's start running down what each of these influences are. So political factors are where governments into the intervene in the economy. It may be applying taxes to certain products that they consider luxuries. It may be creating tariffs to level a competitive field versus external uh, suppliers. It may be labor laws to prevent child labor. It could be trade restrictions uh, to prevent uh, important technology from getting into the hands of enemies. All of these are ways the political are, are all political factors in how the government intervenes in the economy and that can impact your company what you can and can't sell, and how much you can sell your product for. So next we're going to look at economic factors. They impact the need for and the flow of capital. So how much money have you got to spend? How easy it is, is it to come by? Economic growth will impact flow, capital. So if there's a downturn in the economy, money's going to get tight. Interest rates impact how much capital that you can borrow. Exchange rates can impact where you sell your product. I have one client who works extensively with Europe. Uh, the value of the dollar versus the euro significantly impacts when they get business from Europe and when they don't. And then finally, inflation can impact what it is that your, cost, your, your product costs. It can influence what your materials cost, and it can significantly influence your labor. These are the economic factors uh, which impact and are ex an external issue. Social factors are the cultural and demographic aspects that influence your company. Is the population health conscious? Are you experiencing population growth? Or is it level? Or is it decreasing? Germany had an issue with a leveling and decreasing population growth and they had to go out and figure out how to bring in more workers. What's the age distribution? Think about the baby boomers and how they are aging out of the workforce. What are the attitudes toward careers and minorities? 
uh, a woman engineer in the United States is going to have an easier opportunity to get a job than one in Saudi Arabia. What are safety concerns of the population? How worried are they that uh, of long-term risk? These are all social aspects that you need to be aware of and will influence how your company spends its capital and what capital it has to spend. Nowadays, technology is a significant influencer to businesses. It influences what products become obsolete. It influences what new products come into the market. It can lead to innovation, and it can also influence whether or not you outsource. Parts of technology are R&D activities. Automation is highly driven by technology. The rate of change of how business is done is influenced by technology. Production efficiency, those are all influenced by technology. There was an old movie called Other People's Money starring Danny DeVito. And one of the things he, he lines from that movie was that quality can be trumped by technology. He said the company that made buggy whips probably made absolutely the best quality buggy whips out there. But when nobody needed buggy whips anymore, the company had to close. Technology influences your product and your selection and your opportunity. Environmental factors which are an external influence to your company are ecology and aspects such as weather and climate. Uh, they can create new markets. Think of the business of ecotourism. They can also restrict existing markets. Think of what happened to high sulfur coal. When more and more restrictions came on sulfur emissions, companies went to other coal or other sources of energy. It can cause the creation of new laws. Uh, it can cause a company to pack up and move. If you look at what is considered the Rust Belt, or was caused the, called the Rust Belt, it was in the Northeast. And much of the industry moved to the southern United States uh, to get away from the cold weather and having to heat buildings. Finally, okay, soapbox warning. People should look at ISO 14001. That is a standard that helps you reduce costs. If you can make more, waste less, and spend less energy, you're going to make a higher profitability on your pocket and your bottom line. Look at ISO 14001. It's a great standard, and I don't know why more companies don't implement it. Okay, so now we're on the last influence, external influence, if you're using the PESTLE model. It's legal. Now, legal factors can affect how a company operates, its costs, and its demands for product. There's discrimination laws. There's consumer laws. Think about the limits of what is on automotives. If you're as old as me, you may remember the whole Corvair issue and Ralph Nader. Um, more recently, think of Takata airbags. Uh, employment law, there are limitations on that. Child labor laws in the United States are very different from those in other areas of the world. Health and safety laws, OSHA is a very strong issue in the United States. It, many things that are un illegal in the United States are legal in other parts of the world. These can influence the cost, these can influence a product, these can influence how you do business. All right, so now that we have looked at what the elements are of external influences or issues, now we need to consider what's it mean to us? Well, first of all, we take each external influence and we look at what the concerns are. From that, those concerns, we can look at risks, we can look at opportunities, and then we can look at how we're going to monitor them. With internal influences, we looked at how we were going to control them or optimize them. With external influences, all we can do is monitor and react. So now I've given an example for each of the different external issues. Most cases, you would have multiple elements under each one. So political, you would have tariffs. Political, you would have taxes. I'm sure you understand. So looking at the example, political issues might be tariffs. Well, what is the risk? 
it reduces your ability to export products. It makes your product more costly. Or if the tariffs are on your, at your own com country, what it may do is reduce external competition and allow you to bring your pricing up. How are you going to monitor it? Well, if you're in the United States, there's a website called USITC, and that will tell you what new tariffs are coming in and what, which ones are being eliminated. Economically, interest rates. They can limit your capital availability or they can increase your capital availability. You could monitor those by meeting with your bank quarterly or if your bank has a newsletter. Social aspects, aging population. Well, the risk is you have a smaller workforce, but you have an increased demand for certain products. We won't go into which ones those are. Um, and that could impact your strategic planning, and you could look at it in your annual management review as to what new products could you bring out, or what automation are you going to bring in to deal with a smaller workforce. Technology, changing markets, no demand for a current product, or a high demand for a new product. You need to innovate. Environmental, legal, style. I'm sure you can figure all of these out. These are various factors. These are the concerns, the risks, the opportunities, and ways to monitor them. If you're monitoring them, though, recognize you must also react. I did not put anything in here about reactions because that's going to be very dependent on your business. So that's it, folks, for external issues. Now you've got an interested party, you've got an internal issues, you've got external issues, you've now handled context of the organization, and we can go on to other things like organizational knowledge. Hint, hint, we'll be talking about winning the lottery with that one. Don't worry, you can do this. It's simple, it makes sense. I'm going to be putting up even more videos. If you have a question, you can reach me at Technicon 1986 at sbcglobal.net or you can call me at 708-814-3685 or you can look at my website, technicon.com. I did post the text of this presentation and I think I put in some extra examples and some pictures and stuff. Go out and have an absolutely marvelous day. You're going to be great at this.